Hey, what's up there, YouTubers? Edgeman Cinejob coming to you guys today with another product opening. So, today we have a M13 fat pack that we're going to be opening on up. So, I actually stopped after work and picked up one of these at my local shop. And I decided I'm going to open it up for you guys that may be wondering what all you get inside one of these. So, uh, I already pre-cut it a little bit so that it's easier to open. But we'll, uh, we'll take a look at what all we get inside here. So this was only 40 bucks, I believe. Yeah, it was 40 uh, plus tax at my local shop. But on some places online, you can get them a lot cheaper, like 35 bucks, 30 bucks, something like that. Um, so it's definitely worth looking into. So uh, we'll take off the front cover here. Um, we'll take a look at this because inside here, there's actually a poster that snaps off. So we'll take that off real quick. And the only reason why I know is because I've opened up um, some other fat packs. A lot of people will just throw these out and don't even realize that there is a poster on the inside. And I think this one's Nickel Bull Loss. Yeah, and it is. So a nice, awesome Nickel Bull Loss here on the inside. So we'll put that off to the side. All right, so here we have a player's guide to the core set so inside here there are uh, pictures of all the cards organized by the uh, by color so you guys can go over and see what all cards you still need um, there's also top cards and stuff to look out for when opening packs uh, all the kind of cool stuff that you have in the in the entire set and the core sets generally are a lot better for newer players. The expansions are somewhat more for people that know what they're doing and have had a feel for the sets already and like know what's going on with Magic. And then there's a checklist at the back here uh, for you collectors. So uh, looks pretty awesome. It's always nice to keep these in binders and uh, kind of keep track of what cool and awesome rares and foils you've gotten of cards. So we have that. We have some cardboard, which is always cool. So, yay for cardboard. And then we have this box. So we're gonna open this on up and see inside. All right, so more cardboard. You get some deck boxes, I believe. So you have an Ajani one and a Liliana of the Dark Realms. So these fold into uh, deck boxes, and I think they store 75 cards unsleeved. So for you guys that have uh, sleeved cards, it's not really going to do you any good because uh, the sleeves are way too big to fit in these boxes, just as a uh, reference for some of you guys that don't know. All right, uh, but take this stuff out of here, and this turns into a nice storage box for cards. And I have a lot of these, and they're, they're just really nice to organize and keep stuff in. So we have that box, I'll put that off to the side here. And we have packs and packs and packs. We have nine packs here, we have a spin down die, and I believe a hundred lands, or actually I don't think a hundred lands, I think it's like 50 or something like that, because um, this looks to be like not enough for a hundred lands, but um, they give you some lands so that you can actually start deck building and stuff like that. So there's a place to, yeah, these just kind of come apart real easy. Alright, so, I'll open this one as well. Take all that shrink wrap off. Alright, so, we have nine of our packs here. We have a how to play guide for magic, so this thing folds out into just a huge sheet that tells you how to play magic. So if I can fold this out. So looks like such. Uh, it goes over everything magic related, all of the cards, what what goes on on the uh, on the battlefield, on the table, in your hand, and all that kind of stuff. But you guys that buy these can uh, take that into a little bit better consideration and 
a little bit more detail. Um, then we have our land, so I'll open this up. I think these have a tear tab somewhere around here, or maybe not. Yeah, these don't come apart as easy. There we go. All right, so I think these are all just lands. Yeah, we get a bunch of lands for deck construction. And the artwork on them isn't too bad. They look kind of cool. I prefer Zendikar ones regardless, or the uh, or the unhinged ones, but um, some of them have, some of the core sets and some of the expansion sets have some pretty cool lands. So, we have a bunch of lands here. We'll put those off to the side as well. Uh, we have the spin down die with the M13 symbol here. So, awesome for being able to actually play magic and keep track of your life total. So, put that there. And now we're gonna crack these packs open. So we're just gonna kind of skim through them real quick and see what all we get. I know you guys mainly just want to see the rares, so I'm just gonna kind of glance over the commons and uncommons, so you guys at least see what I get. But then I'll focus more on the rares. And we got Nickel Bolas Planeswalker. Awesome. Just absolutely awesome. So that's our first rare out of our packs. No foil, no shinies for us. Uh, this one. The Vampire is always nice. Great card. Pacifism is good. Reliquary Tower. Nice reprint. We have Sands of Delirium. So we have a nice mill card here. Three mana to play. And you can pay X amount of mana into it. Tap and your opponent mills for that amount of cards. Awesome. And no foil out of this one either. And we have a Firewing Phoenix, so a nice reoccurring card. Not bad and limited for you guys that play limited formats. Well, the limited format, but drafting and sealed. Mind Sculpt, though, always, always a nice card. But generally, the uh, the core sets always have a good variety of cards that are going to be pretty... Some of them are pretty decent, some of them are actually pretty good, and uh, they'll last you for a year. Most of them, some of them will get reprinted, um, generally most of them, but... Um, from year to year, they're going to last you a while, and there are always some cool cards that are pretty effective. Now, we have Thunder Maw Hellkite, so another mythic. This card is ridiculous. 5-5 uh, five, five for 5, Flying Haste, and whenever it enters the battlefield, deals 1 damage to each creature with flying your opponent controls. Tap those creatures. Just a ridiculous card. It's actually a pretty expensive card at the time of the recording now. Um, it's I think it's like 30 bucks now, but it, it'll probably fluctuate later on probably go down a little bit or a lot I don't know depends on all when you guys are watching this video
but generally if you guys buy one of these you are going to be well on your way to constructing some decks it may not be the most like great or the most expensive but it's definitely a start for newer players soul clash spider another awesome card for limited actually not that bad for standard either two seven for five reach and it can deal damage to flying creatures with its x and two green ability awesome card one of my favorite green cards for uh the limited format And we have Door to Nothingness, so a just just a really, really big artifact card for for five mana. Uh, enters the battlefield tapped, and for two of each color, tap, sacrifice it. Target player loses the game. I've actually seen people play this um, for the pre-release whenever we played Sealed, where we got six packs and then played with the cards that we got out of there. Um, a couple of people actually pulled it and ended up playing it and did well with it. They actually won games with Door to Nothingness, so it was pretty funny. Alright, I think, what, two more packs? Yeah, two more packs to go after this one. And we have a Sun Petal Grove, always awesome for newer players to get some of the dual lands and kind of fix up your decks. So, provides green or white mana for you. Unfortunately, I've been buying the core sets for, for a while now, so I have all the uh, other previous prints of <laughs> Sun Petal Grove. So I already have my four copies that I need. But I always end up trading off the cards that I don't need the people, so um, it usually just helps somebody else with decks. Boundless Realms, so 7 cost sorcery. Uh, this one's mainly for EDH constructed decks, but uh, it's not a, it's not a bad card. You search your deck for X amount of card or X amount of lands, where X is the total amount of lands that you control. And we have a foil. We have a nice and shiny Faith's Reward. So this is a rare. So uh, that's that's pretty nice to get a foil rare out of out of this one. Return to the battlefield all permanent cards to your grave that were sent to your graveyard from the battlefield this turn. Um, really nice card. I've I played against it, uh, again, to bring up the pre-release. I played against it in the pre-release, and some guy just saved himself for one turn, but it, I ended up still beating him, though, so didn't really help him too much. All right, and we have our last pack here, so we'll see just what we get out of this one. I have to say, uh, so far, it's it's been a great pack. The, uh, the Nickel Bolas and the Thunder Maul Hellkite were pretty nice. Alright, so Servant, it's pretty good, Fog's nice, Searing Spear's a great card, even for Constructed. And Voidstalker is our last rare here, so 2-1 for 2 mana, for 3 mana tap, put uh, Voidstalker and Target Creature on top of their owner's libraries, those players shuffle their libraries, so... Uh, interesting card. Not bad for limited. But yeah, that about does it for the Fatback opening. So we did actually pull a decent amount of stuff uh, that was actually pretty good. The Nickel Bolas is nice and uh, the Thunder Maw Hellkite. I, uh, I can really appreciate those cards. But uh, Fatback, definitely something to look into, especially if you're a newer player. But even 
um, more advanced players, you, you get some money out of it. Uh, you can get some good rares. Uh, as you can see, I pulled two Mythics out of it. But uh, please be sure to like, favorite, and subscribe for more daily Magic the Gathering content. And as always, thank you guys for watching and have a wonderful, fun-filled Magic the Gathering day.